Hello and welcome to Judy's Creations in Crochet. And today is August the 3rd, 2023. Another brand new month. And so Kiki is dropping by to show you her newest outfit, which to many of you, this is not new. She wore it last year, but this is her August little dress and we will put her up here where she belongs and it also seems that my real live furry friend is beginning to enjoy the limelight so he wants to hop up here in my lap every time I sit down to videotape we know he won't stay long he just likes to be in the way so um, I want to welcome everybody. Again, we've had a number of newcomers, and that always excites me. We're up to, I think it was 940-something when I looked at it this morning, getting closer and closer to my magic number of 1,000. And you know that's my goal, and it isn't a goal so that I can be monetized. Do not worry about me ever monetizing. I just want to reach that number. Um, so I'm really happy to welcome newcomers. If you like hearing about finished objects, sometimes seeing whips, and a fair bit about yarn and uh, patterns. And the yarn I mostly talk about is hand-dyed yarn, as you can see by the yarn that is behind me always. Um, if this is something you enjoy listening to and learning about, then I hope you'll stay with me and join in the fun we have here. And this might be a good time to just make a very quick mention of the fact that <coughs> almost another year for me is drawing to an end. And September is a very, very big month for me. September is not only my when I have my birthday, but it is also the anniversary of my channel. I actually started my channel on my birthday two years ago. And so I spend the month of September celebrating both of those things. And later in the month, I'll tell you some of what's coming. So, um... I'm glad to see you. I hope you will give me a thumbs up and um, comment. I love to hear your comments. I, I respond to every single one. So, um, and I appreciate all of my viewers, both the new ones that have joined in and uh, hopefully enjoy what they see, but also my um, repeat customers, repeat offenders, as Jackie says, um, I appreciate every single one of you, and I like to make a channel that is um, informative. That's one of my main goals, is to be informative and share what I know about the Yarny community. So, that's enough of that. Let's, uh, let's move on. I have a lot of different topics to cover today. And first of all, I want to um, refer back to last week's video. A couple of things I want to talk about there. Um, the first thing is that uh, last week we finished up the um, oh, Christmas in July. <laughs> You know, when you get older, the words don't come as fast as you would like. We finished up the Christmas in July, and I want to again post a picture. I took this snapshot from my video last week that shows the Advent calendar that I opened during the month. And you recall me saying that there were lots of pretty colors and that I would be doing them in groups of uh, similar colors. And I had some people comment that I should do a bunch of different things. Well, after that video was over, I took all of the colors down from the board and I arranged them in what looked like an appropriate order. And lo and behold, when you put them all together in a certain way, here's the picture, 
this is what they look like. And so I have to think the dyer created this with this kind of fade and gradient in mind. And I have to say, I fell in love with it. It's, it's a beautiful gradient set. And since there are only 10 grams in each, which is 40, 45 yards in each one, it isn't as long. And I'm thinking that I just really love the way they look together. And so I am going to keep them together and I'm going to find a project, maybe even this fall, of putting them all together in this one fade. What do you think? Isn't it a beautiful gradient set that uh, if I start at the one end, the browns, and work all the way through to the other end where the blacks are, that that will look like a beautiful rainbow, actually. And uh, I have them laid out on the table here beside me, and I keep looking at them and really, really loving the way those colors match. And if you look real closely, there is a variegated, a solid, a variegated, a solid all the way through. And I think it'll look lovely. So I'm going to find a pattern for that. And if you have a suggestion, fine, please pass it on. But uh, I'm definitely going to work with that as a complete set. Now, the other thing that um, I found quite interesting was... Last week, if you recall, I did a review, as I do every so often, I review EFA. I, once again, he's left, but he left me with a lap full of, of hair. Um, I did a review on EFA, that's Expression Fiber Arts, Twisted Tweed Sport Yarn, um, which I really, really like, and... Um, I thought that the item I made looked quite nice, and I did get some compliments on it. Well, I released a video on Thursday reviewing Twisted Tweed Sport Yarn from EFA, and on Friday, if you follow Expression Fiber Arts, and you really should, even if you don't buy the yarn, you can get a free pattern every week. The next day, they released a crochet, mind you, not knitted, a crocheted pattern using Twisted Tweed Sport. And here is the picture of that pattern. Um, a shawl, you know, I love shawls using Twisted Tweed Sport, and I immediately went and looked at the Twisted Tweed Sport to see what other kits, because they had several kits put together to do that pattern. Um, none of them really spoke to me, so I said, well, you got some in your stash. Go down and see what Twisted Tweed Sport you have. And I have come up with this to start at the top with this color. Then I won't be able to hold them all at once, I'm sure. And then to go on to this color, as you can tell, that's a color I would like. And then work on to the bottom in these two colors. Now, can I put them? I'll just hold up one ball. Oops. There are the colors together. What do you think? Would that be pretty in that shawl? I'm hoping so. And the shawl is huge. So I only have to, um, I'm more concerned I don't have as much of this color as I would like. But you know what? I just go until it runs out. And then the blues are in a, you know, a wider section. So it'll be good to have whole skeins of that. I do have one concern about this pattern. So I'm going to actually put it full screen for a second so you can get a closer up view of it. And I want you to look at the rows there. I think they curse two or three times rows that look kind of like broomstick lace. It isn't, but it looks like it. So here's the picture again. Take a look at those. <clears throat> now, as you know, I am not a Tunisian crocheter as much as I would love to. The fact that I hold my hook like this 
means there is no place when you're doing Tunisian crochet and you have a long row, there's no place for the yarn to go. And people tell me, well, you got to learn to use the knife grip. And believe me, I have tried. It, it doesn't work for me. People do it this way. People do it this way. It doesn't work for me. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I've never been able to do Tunisian crochet. And you know, I'm not a knitter. N knitting and I have a love-hate relationship. I have knit in the past, and I know it's the way that I learned to knit that... Um, is the problem. Someday maybe I'll pick up some circular needles and try it that way, but at this point in time, there's just too much crochet to do. So I look at this pattern with those broomsticks lace in it, and Shandy did um, a tutorial showing it. And of course she does a little section like this, and she shows how you can use a hook this length Hers is straight, not curved like mine. And you put all these long loops on the hook. And then she took a short needle, and it was a DPN needle, and she just slid it in so she could take her hook out, and then she proceeded, she turned it around, she proceeded to take each one off the hook. So a lot like some Tunisian crochet, but it's only the one row, and... I'm looking at that saying, yeah, that's nice for this length. But if you look at that shawl, it goes around quite lengthy. And then farther down, even longer. Now, I can't do that with this little hook. I guess I need to get a Tunisian hook with cord on it. And I need to get a really long circular needle or a needle with a long cord on it, a circular needle with a long cord. And I'm looking at that and saying, well, do I really want to go and purchase those two things for one pattern? I don't know. You tell me, you experienced people out there, is an easier way to do it than that? I really don't want to invest the money in two big needles and cords and hooks that I, I will only use once. And maybe there is another way to do it. Or maybe I just leave it out. Do you think it would ruin the pattern? I'd like to hear your comments on that. And I have a feeling when I'm ready to get started on it, which I hope will be this fall, maybe even later this month, I may email them and say, like, what do you think we're supposed to do if we're not Tunisian crocheters or knitters? Anyway, that's my comment on that. And while I was talking, I realized that I did not talk about what I am wearing. And the last time I did that, I had questions. So I'm going to mention it quickly. I have made this a year, maybe even two years ago. I know I made it in the summer. I uh, just don't think it was last summer. And this is just a big circular kind of cape. If you ever watch um, Seta from Seta's Place, she used to wear one of these all the time. She's uh, branched out to other things now. And it's just circular with lots of chains. It grows very fast. It's sort of a poncho. And it goes down here and about a little lower than my waist. And it's made out of some uh, very... Um, I think it's number four, but it's chain spun yarn that I got from Knit Crate, I'm pretty sure, way back when I had a subscription with them. And uh, very, very light because it is chain spun. Um, don't remember the pattern name, but it was a tutorial on YouTube. And if you go to one of Seta's old videos she will have a link i may even have a link in it in one of my very early videos when i first wore it all right so now we want to move on i have a finished object in fact i finished more than one thing this past week but you're only going to get to see this one this is called the Comian, C-O-M-I-E-N, shawl. And I'm going to take it off her. 
but you will see how very long it is. And it used four, um, four skeins of yarn. And I, I just went stash diving. And I, a while back, a friend and I took all of my yarns from way back and we put them together in twos and threes that went together so that I could get using them in bigger patterns rather than one skein wonders. And what happened was I had these two skeins in a package together, which are here, these two. And then I had the next two skeins, and I can't show you the balls. I had them together in uh, a package. And I happened to have them out at the same time, and I thought, you know what? They do go together because there is teal in this color here. So I put all four together. It is a um, asymmetrical triangle, starts out small, and if I recall correctly, it's just, um, it's either double crochets or half double crochets. Sometimes I can't tell them apart. And that's all it is. And it grows, but it tells you when to change the colors. Now, what you probably can't see, ah, there you can see it a bit. This is a sparkle. And this is a sparkle. And the third one, the third one is a sparkle too, but it's not as evident as the other. The last one wasn't a sparkle. Oh, I'm sorry. Each section, been, I've been two weeks since I finished it. Each section has a different stitch. So this is just plain double crochets, then we get into cross stitches. I don't know. Can you see these stitches are crossed? Right there, see the cross? Because there's space between them, it pulls a bit, but these are all cross stitches. And then we get to, um, just a pattern of open, open spaces with the double, these are double, so those first were half double. And then the last section was supposed to be this pattern, and I decided I didn't care for it. Two rows was enough, and then I just did some more doubles. Now, this last section was supposed, well, actually, this section was supposed to be longer, and I think all but the first section, all of them I did shorter than they said because look at how long this is. Well, I think it's almost nine feet long, between eight and nine feet, because there's my wingspan and I still have that much left. Um. So I, I started leaving a little bit out each section, but when I got to the last section, I said, uh-uh, this is enough. It's gotten big enough. It wasn't as wide in the original pattern either. It wasn't much bigger than this, maybe another couple inches. But what went through my head when I got here was that I loved these colors together so much that I wanted to be sure to have enough left over that I could make another project. And in fact, I actually did. I had 80 grams of this and I think 40 or 39 grams of this one. So I did a shawl that was predominantly this with some lines of this in it. And I will show that to you in September because I was trying some patterns by a designer that I found and I've contacted her and she is willing to be our focus designer for September. So you'll hear more about her and the yarn I used um, when I show that pattern in September. But this is, this is it. And what I notice is it gets very long. It stays skinny, stays very skinny for a long time. So it's a much bigger asymmetrical triangle than most. Um, I'm not too sure how well I like how long it is, but 
it is big enough that you can put the point at the front and still wrap it around her neck. Put the point there and then wrap it around twice more. And I actually tied a knot in the end for some interest. And when you're all done, you see all of the colors. Isn't that interesting? So um, I would call it sort of beyond easy because of some of these stitches, but not, not hard, not real hard. So that is the finished object I have from this past week. And um, I had another finished object using these other two colors, which you'll hear about more at a later date. And I'm hanging on to the yarn to show you what happened. Okay, um, next, next we're going to look at a project I started to work on with a purpose. Um, my purpose was to talk to you, and I've mentioned it several times, about combining mohair with, uh, a, say, a fingering weight. You see um, in past acquisitions that I actually bought some pairs of yarn where I had a fingering weight base and a matching mohair yarn. So I'm going to show you the project I started on. It is a project that is um, an asymmetrical triangle. Uh, again, it's by the designer that I'm going to showcase in September. And it came with, the pattern was made for using um, a mini bundle, a bundle of, I think it's six different colors, and combining it with uh, a mohair. And I actually, I think I showed you not too long ago, this bundle I had, in fact, I think I talked about it, the bundle I had of blues, and I said I added another blue, and I'm making this pink, the contrast color that goes through it every so often. I showed you th that I was going to do that a couple of weeks ago. So here are the colors I am using. I'm in the middle of the second one now. I've already finished the first one. I'm not too sure why this is in here. I guess it just got in there from somewhere else. Anyhow, um, so that's the contrast color. See that it's in there? And this is the mohair. Okay? Now, it is, this whole set is from Polka Dot Creek, which is in Alberta, I believe. And, um, oh, I had them in order. Now they're out of order. Oh, well, it is what it is. Um, I wanted to talk to you about using mohair with, actually, I thought I would talk about the yarn by itself, the yarn with mohair, and mohair by itself. So, first of all, you know what it's like to stitch with a fingering weight yarn and you know how it feels and how it drapes, especially if you're using the right um, hook. This is a, a 4.0 millimeter hook, which is the normal thing that I use. Some people use three and a half, but I tend to use four a lot with uh, fingering weights. And <laughs> you know how they stitch up and how they drape, and so on. So I wanted to talk about what happens with mohair. Well, first of all, when you combine mohair with it, of course, you're going to make the texture different. It is, it is soft. And this is mohair with silk. Some people use kid silk. That would be similar as well and see how fine it is. I have another one over here I'll show you in a minute. But here's something I really want you to know. You think 
if you're using mohair, as fine as mohair is, that you wouldn't be changing the weight very much. But in truth, you really are. When I feel this compared to feeling a fingering weight, um, it is heavier. It is heavier. And of course, you are working with two strands. So you have to pay attention while you're working to make sure you don't leave a strand behind because that happens when you're working with multiple strands. So you do have to sometimes pull a stitch or two out and go back and get the missing strand. Now, my first, the first thing I noticed was how much heavier this was. And I wasn't really sure if I liked the heaviness or not. Verdict is still out on it. I'm not really sure if I like the heaviness or not. I mean, it's not super, super heavy, but it's it's definitely the weight of sport weight, maybe even close to DK, depending on your comparisons and the weight of your fingering, because they vary. So that was my first uh, observation. My second was, um, I don't think it has quite the drape, but then, you know, I am so used to working with these lightweight yarns, even lighter than this, fingering and lace weight, that maybe that's what's clouding my vision of it all. Um, it doesn't feel like it has the same drape to me, but it does have some. And the other thing I don't know, until I'm done, I won't know, when I block this, you know how much fingering weight can expand, grow. Will it grow? Will it expand? It, uh, it, I guess it feels like it could stretch some. I don't know. So I'll be back to you to talk about what it feels like um, and how it reacts when I block it. And again, this is a designer I'm showcasing in September. So I intend to have this done by then. So I'll have blocked it and be able to tell you for sure how this acts in blocking. I have to guess that it would, um, it would expand to some extent, but I don't know how mohair works. This is my first real experience with any amount of mohair. So that's what I am working on a little bit at a time, back and forth with other things. But that will definitely be done by the end of August, along with um, uh, along with what else did I talk about? <laughs> the project here that will be an FO in September as well. The the using the other yarns from this. Then uh, I thought I should also, besides comparing it to that, I thought I should also talk about, well, what about stitching with mohair by itself? So I got out a different skein of mohair because I didn't want to play with that one that I'm using. And I had this mohair already caked up in my cupboard. And when you look at that, how fine it is, you think, oh my goodness. And when I was trying to select a hook, well, it looked like you could use a 2.5 or even a 2. It's so fine. But I said, no, a 2 is not quite the right size. I would probably use a 2.5. But I really wanted to see how it would act with a bigger hook and make something nicer. So I want to see if you can see the difference the top and the bottom are done with two different size hooks. So I'll, I'll slant it so you can see the top. That is done with a 5.0 millimeter hook. And then the other side, I think you can see the difference. 
is done with a 3.5 millimeter hook. Now, my first observation. This was really quite nice to work with. It wasn't hard. I thought, oh, I'm going to have so much trouble with this fine, fine yarn. Not at all, especially with the 5.0. 3.5 was fine, but the 5.0 just worked along no problem whatsoever. The other observation I have is that I like the results with a 5.0 hook more than the 3. 3 point, sorry, 5.0, yes, and 3.5. In the 3.5, um, you can feel the texture. You sort of feel stitches. Down here, yeah, you can feel them if you really want, but you get more of a, of a feel of just the softness of it. And I'm thinking I'm going to do a pattern um, maybe an asymmetrical triangle or maybe just a scarf type thing. I would eventually like to even do a wrap, but I don't have enough of one color. I don't know how far this goes. Um, but I'm going to use my 5.0, maybe even 5.5 and do something with some mohair. I really like the feel of it. Um, I like the look of it. I thought it would be sparse, but it isn't. It has a very nice look, and if it's got a nice color. Now, here's the one thing I didn't try. I wanted to wait until I was on camera with you, and that is, what will it be like to frog if I make a mistake? And it's exactly what I thought. It gets hung up on itself. Yep. Because I have to frog this back to put it in the cake. Okay, there we go. Yeah. You can see mohair is not something you're going to want to have to frog. Every other stitch gets hung up on itself. So I'm carefully going to try and take this out, but that is not coming. I may have to lose that much of my cake. Frogging is not something you want to do with mohair. So you want to pick a pattern that's pretty straightforward and easy, in my opinion, and pay attention so you don't make mistakes. Know what you're doing before you get started. But working with it, well, it's heavenly because it's so soft, and it does make a really nice fabric when you're done. So you're going to see me make something entirely out of mohair sometime in the future. Hopefully the not too distant future. Um, putting it with something else is definitely an option. It does come out a little bit easier because it's with the other yarn. But you still have mohair getting hung, hung up on mohair. So... That is my observation on working with mohair, and I'm definitely going to be doing more in the future. We'll see when this other project is done, whether I do it in tandem with another yarn or by itself. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, moving on. Very small amount of acquisitions. As you know, um, one of my followers is Adam in the UK. And I have mentioned before that Adam does a little bit of hand dyeing and he has a shop on Etsy. Um, here is his card. You see the information there at the bottom. And every once in a while, I take a look to see what yarn he might have. I bought yarn from him in the past, and he had some mini skeins. I think Adam is still doing a fair bit of experimenting. Am I correct, Adam? Anyway, he had this one set of minis that I really liked, and you will know why the minute you see them. There they are. It's like, Adam, did you specially dye those up for me? 
So we have the straight purple, the straight blue, the variegated. It has purple, blue, and gray in it. This has a little bit of almost black and white with the blue and purple and gray. And um, I am going to be participating in a, um, a make-along with Karen Hooley that starts the middle of this month. And it's, uh, it's a mystery. We know we're making a cow, and she told us to get a five-set of minis. And I'm thinking this may be my set of minis for that cow. Now, as well, Adam had some other minis in a variety of colors, and it was a mystery. In other words, you could see all of the minis, but you would order one or two, and you would get luck of the draw. Well... <laughs> Adam is a real sweetie because I contacted him and I said, you know how I really don't like yellow? And um, quite a number of them had yellow in it. And I said, do you have multiples of any of those colors? No, he said, it's exactly what you see in the picture. He had one of this and two of that and so on. And I said, well, how do I avoid those yellows? He said, which ones do you like? I told him the five I liked. Obviously, all the others were yellow or had yellow in them somehow. And he, he picked the five I like and sent them to me. And so here they are. I have two the same that are gray, purple, and pink. Then there is one that is completely purple. It could go along with that other set. Then there is one that is white with pink, purple, and gray. And finally, one that is, while well, it's greens, but it has a lot of shades of green in it, but a little bit of aqua too. And these are... Um, a merino nylon mix. It doesn't actually say on here. I don't. Oh, yeah. 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, and you know how I like that mix. So these are, are very fine feeling. Uh, they will be a joy to work with. I don't know if I'll be putting these three together or putting them in some other project. Who knows? But I think those other five may stay together. So that's my acquisitions for <clears throat> this week. Um, I have uh, next week, I will have my Arkansas sock subscription um, because I know it got mailed out at the end of last week and it's almost always here in very quick time uh has to be here before i videotape though which is likely to be next wednesday so hopefully it gets here before i videotape and i'll have that to show you next week so um one other project i'm working on and then i think you're all waiting for my big announcement i'm working on a shawl using this yarn from hobium called universe it is 98% um, acrylic, 2% polyester. I think you can see that's the sparkle in it. And each of these balls has uh, 500, I'm positive, it's 500, 505 yards. Um, I have worked with this before, and I thought, this is a little thinner than I really want to make a shawl. And I purposely ordered <clears throat> three of the colors. Well, one of them I only have two balls, and it will work out. But most cases, I ordered three balls. And in one case, I think I ordered four. And my thought was, I'm going to put, put it together double. So I took two cakes. I didn't want to bring it all down to bring two cakes and the project and everything. I just left it upstairs. Get off of that. So I took two cakes and I got them at the same color and I'm working with it. 
Uh, and I'm almost done the first two cakes. The third one I thought I would take from the inside and the outside, again, match up the colors. If you don't match up the colors, I think it's going to look awful busy. But with the matched up colors, it looks very pretty. The only thing I've discovered is is much heavier than I really like. Now, I will finish this one in this heavier weight. And again, with blocking, I hope it blocks out um, and stretches out because it is not as big as I would like. But if it's stretched, it will be a bit thinner. Um, but I think next time I use this yarn, I'm going to work with it just single. Uh, I guess I've gotten more used to lighter weight, so I think it would be okay. Um, because I really, I don't like the heaviness of it. Maybe it'll be better when it's blocked. But I have this um, yarn in, oh, I don't know, four or five different colors. I'm glad I tried it the way I did. I will know before I use all the others that I want to do something different. And it'll be a while before I do use it again. This um. This yarn is one of the ones with sparkle that I don't like as much because it's a twist. See this, can you see is that? There you can. That fine thread. It's not Stellina. Stellina is much nicer to work with. But that fine thread comes separate from the regular. And then when you have two of them, you basically got four different strands. And I find I have to take out, there it is. I find I have to take out a stitch quite frequently um, because I've missed a strand of metallic. And when you're going through to pull a loop back, it splits and gets tangled. This is not double stranded. This is not my favorite thing to work with. I'll tell you what I think of it when I work with it single stranded, but that metallic coming separate from it as you work is a bit of a pain. Okay, so that's what I'm working on and that will be that will be my finished object for next week. Finally, I said I would have a big announcement this week. I have once again gone to destash. And this time I was ruthless. I have done a major, major destashing. I have one box that's probably two feet by two feet, and it might be a foot and a half tall or more, totally full. Oh, it's bigger than two feet. It's as wide as this table, so it might be 30 inches. Anyway, it's a very big box. It is overflowing. And I have two other smaller boxes overflowing. Plus, I have uh, a storage container with hand-dyed yarns. And these are going to be a mix of hand-dyed and other yarns, store-bought yarns. Uh, some is from Lion Brand. I have a little bit from Premier, a fair bit. Lion Brand, Ice Yarn, um, things I got from Hobium. As much as I like this yarn, I know I am not going to get to it. I know in my whole life, it's just too much for me to ever use. And as you know, I'm always buying more hand-dyed yarns and I need places to put it. So I decided to get Ruthless, and I could go back and take more out. I just thought I would start this way. And here's the deal. I'm going to let you choose whether you want a $40, $50, or $60 mystery box. You will get more than value for your money. And then, of course, there will be shipping on top of it. Not only can you choose whether it's 40, 50, or 60, it's almost certain, well, it is certain, in the 50 or $60 one, you will get one cake for sure, a cake like this of hand-dyed yarn. Not this one particularly. I have, uh, oh, I don't know, 30 different cakes of yarn or more. And um, here's the other deal. 
I'm not promising anything. The $40 one may or may not have. If you really like hand-dyed yarn and have a $40 box, say so, that you really would like a hand-dyed yarn in it, that's fine. But I guarantee the 50 and 60 will have hand-dyed yarn in it. Now, here's the deal. When you have to email me. Tell me you'd like a box. Tell me the value that you would like to purchase. And, of course, your full mailing address so I can work out the shipping. I noticed the last two times I went to the post office, their givings, I have a, a small business owner card because I had a business, and that gives me a slight discount. Very little, usually about a dollar or so. But I've noticed the last few times when I've been doing U.S. shipments, they're giving like 5 and 6 and $7 discounts. Now, it doesn't happen every time. I go this week. It may happen today, not tomorrow. It may happen tomorrow and next week and then not the time after. It's hit and miss. Um, the post office is saying that it was done. And then I went back and it was on again. So hopefully we will get a bit of a deal in the shipping, but I have to tell you for boxes of this size, because they will be plump full. I have boxes of every shape and size. And um, I would say we could be looking at $25 on average. I might get some through at $20 depending on the dimensions and weight. It might be some that are a little more. In Canada, for sure, they will go express post. Um, but my boxes are all bigger than the flat rate box. It goes for 28. Um, and I will have a lot more in it. There are some yarns that I have four matching balls or one. I think I have five matching balls. Ice yarn, sometimes there's more than that. Um, there are cases where I have a single of this or single of that. Most of them don't have significant yarn in them. And this is the other thing when you email me. You can tell me, I will not guarantee or promise anything, but you can tell me if, say, you're allergic to wool and don't want any wool, if um, you like to have cotton. I have a little bit of cotton, but very little, so there won't be a lot of that. You can tell me, because this is what I would appreciate. Is there a color you love, or is there a color you hate? If I can at least avoid a color you don't like. Like for me, I don't get mystery boxes, because I can guarantee you I'll get it with half of it being yellow, and you know how I love yellow. So um, if there is a color you feel about like I feel about yellow and don't ever want to see it. I can avoid a color for sure. Can I promise you that if your favorite color is orange, I got lots of orange? No, I may have one ball and one person will get it and others won't. But, you know, if you like earth tones or if you like bright colors or, you know, there's something you like heavy weights or you like light weights, I can try to accommodate that. I can try to make these to your um, preferences. No guarantees, but I would like when I'm down there looking at a whole bunch of black and white or a whole bunch of, I don't have any yellow to look at, but maybe uh, orange or blue or green, that if you like that color, I can try to put it in. Or if you don't like that color, I can avoid it. If you really like heavier weights, I have hand-dyed yarns in four weights that I won't ever use, I will put in. But if you don't like four weights, I have hand-dyed in two weights, well, fingering weights, whatever you want to call that. I have yarn. I have a couple of yarns that are bulky weight, not many. Um, but if you like fours and fives, I can give you more fours and fives and I will leave out lighter weight yarns. But if you really like light yar weight yarns, I won't put a four or a five in your box. Um, like I said, I can try to make it something you would use. Um, I have cakes, quite a number of cakes. I have some very fine cakes. You like metallic? Tell me that. I have some with metallic, some without. I have baby blanket. Um, not much of that, but a little bit. So 
I would like to, it's a mystery, but I would like to make it a little bit to your um, preferences and, um, and the, and the amount that you feel you can afford, 40, 50, or 60 plus the shipping. That depends how much you will get. And I'll guarantee you're getting more than 40, 50, or $60 in that box because if I put in one skein of yarn, one skein of hand-dyed yarn, they're all, we're talking Canadian money here, they're all $40 or more a skein and I'm not just going to put $20, two or three balls with it. You know I'm going to put a fair bit. And in some cases, if you get five matching balls, you may get a little less because, you know, how rare is it to get four or five matching balls in a mystery box? You usually get a whole lot of ones. Um, and I wouldn't do that to anybody, give you an entire box of singles. That wouldn't be fair. So. Anyway, I have a lot of yarn, and if I go through it, I can go back and find a lot more. I got to a point where I had too much on the floor, and I stopped culling from some of my um, containers. So uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Send me an email at judyscreations21 at gmail.com. It's in the description box below, and we'll start getting those mystery boxes out to you. You will email me. We will work out, you know, um, a, a weight and size of a box, and I'll explain to you how the money will get transferred. So that's all I have to say today. I hope that was enough. Um, next week, what's happening next week? Well, I will have at least one, if not two, finished objects. And hopefully I'll have my Arkansas yarn here to show you. If not, I have another acquisition to show you. So have a great week. Look forward to seeing you again next week. And until then, happy hooking.